My name is Shalina Rood and I graduated from Burkett Educational Center as well as with my graduating class here at Tippie Valley um, in 2009. My name is Jeff Beaver and I graduated from Tippecanoe Valley High School in 1995. Hi, my name is Robbie Hammond. I graduated from Tippecanoe Valley High School in 2006. Hi, my name is Joe Harter. I'm a 1980 graduate of Tippecanoe Valley High School. My name is Derek Jenkins. I graduated from Tippecanoe Valley in 2007. Uh, my name is Douglas Ruth. I graduated from Tippecanoe Valley High School in 1985. My name is Sue Creighton, and I'm a 1962 graduate of Mentone High School. Um, I don't think I necessarily have a most memorable moment, but uh, the most memorable thing about high school would definitely be being able to raise um, my daughter as well as getting an education. Oh, there were so many, it's hard to pick from just one moment. But I will say that homecoming was always the most fun. In our day, we decorated the hallways. We even brought a car into freshman hallway. Uh, being a big uh, sports fan, that's something I do with my career. I have to gravitate towards some of the sporting events that uh, I was involved in. Um, we won the section, not section, we won the TRC title in 2006. Well, it was the 2005 season, but my senior year. And it was only the second time we ever did it in school history. Um, for high school, for me, when I first started here, sports were huge, and I was uh, very lucky to have played in the 1979 state championship football game, but I had a passion for every sport that uh, I played in and even watching as in, in attendance at school, so sports were definitely a big part in high school. It's hard to think of just one memorable moment. Um, mostly just hanging out with my friends, being able to have such close relationships with everybody in the community. Um, I found out the hard way that a lot of times if you're planning on doing something, your parents are going to find out even before you know what you're doing. Uh, just thinking back on uh, high school, just uh, memorable moments are uh, hanging out with friends, just had some friends during lunch, but um, uh, I have to say probably a, a memorable moment is that uh, when I was in high school, I was uh, fairly a shy kid. I did put myself out there, so I kind of thought that I was underneath the radar, that uh, People didn't notice me so much, and uh, during the last week of senior year, um, they had the ballot boxes out that people would vote on, uh, you know, the best athlete, the best um, uh, student, uh, things like that. So I was sitting in a science class at the end, and over the loudspeaker, they started announcing who won which one, and they said, uh, preppiest dresser, uh, Doug Ruth. And uh, I was like, I don't even know what the preppiest dresser meant. So I actually looked back at my yearbook this last week, and I was wearing brown boat shoes, pleated jeans, an Izod uh, sweater and then a button down, so I, I kind of think I see what they uh, thought of that. So um, probably that'd be a memorable moment. I did so many things in high school, I, I remember so much, but the most memorable to me was graduation. And I think it was because I was no longer gonna be with that group of people and it was emotional. And so I just remember that so much. My freshman year actually was uh, the most fun time in high school. Uh, just new faces, old friends, um, just a whole new atmosphere. I enjoyed the positive learning environment. Tippecanoe Valley offers students something that you get nowhere else. A school that's like a home. I think just the camaraderie. It's a sense of family here at Tippecanoe Valley uh, with a close-knit com community that you just grow up in. and. Um, so like having my dad as a teacher for over 30 years, uh, I grew up with uh, Tippecanoe Valley and uh, just, yeah, just the camaraderie and the, the close-knit family atmosphere. Uh, the thing I enjoy the most is, you know, coming from Akron and Mentone, the two schools combining of meeting new friends, which ultimately became lifelong relationships. What I enjoyed most was camaraderie, um, coming out of the close together. Um, we went through some trials together. We went through good times together. Uh, but more than anything, we all came together when it mattered the most. Uh, I really enjoyed the classes that were all hands-on. I'm kind of a tactile learner, so the things were visual, hands-on. So I took a lot of drafting, uh, took photography, electronics, shop classes. So things that were hands-on, I really enjoyed that. And then obviously I liked playing basketball uh, during lunch with, you know, 50 other sweaty kids that uh, would smell the school up at the end of the day. 
that it was small. Um, back then we had all the county schools and we were in competition with one another and everybody at Mentone was a Mentone oriented and I appreciated being in a small school. I did. I continued it at uh, Ivy Tech Community College in Warsaw and then second semester continued it in um, Ivy Tech of South Bend and uh, for photography. After I graduated high school I went on to Ivy Tech for a while where I degreed there and then I moved on to go to Indiana University. What did you major in? I studied uh, literature, American literature and engineering and business and photography and photojournalism, more exact. I went to Bethel College and I graduated there in 2010 and then I also did a master's at a Defiance College in 2013 I graduated. What did you major in? At Bethel College I double majored in business administration and sport management and then at uh, Defiance College I majored in, um, oh I got an MBA, Master's of Business Administration with a concentration in sport management. I attended uh, Purdue University and Indiana Wesleyan University. I majored in uh, mechanical engineering at Purdue University and went on to get a master's in management at Indiana Wesleyan. After graduating high school, I went to University of Northwestern Ohio for travel and hospitality management. And then I eventually went on to get my certifications for EMS and fire here in the state of Indiana. Um, I went to a school in Ohio called Cedarville University for a year and I transferred to Purdue University in Fort Wayne uh, to study architectural engineering. And then my last semester, uh, to round that out was a joint effort with uh, the architectural program with Notre Dame uh, to study in Rome, Italy. I attended uh, many years after high school. I attended um, uh, Indiana University in Fort Wayne. I have an associate's degree in behavioral sciences. Uh, I continued then uh, with Indiana Wesleyan where I got a degree, a bachelor's degree in business management. And uh, later then I went to Duke University where, and went through their advanced management program which was focused a lot on international business and so I had the full gamut. Well, it's certainly not conventional my career path. I worked full time uh, through college I started off as a CNA um, and then I worked at a small boutique in Rochester um, and then after my second pregnancy um, I decided that schooling um, wasn't as important as motherhood so I kind of went off um, in the direction of motherhood uh, and then three years after that I actually became a stay-at-home mom with a very flexible photography career. Currently, I'm self-employed. My career path has been long and winding. I started out out of college as a DJ, where I moved on to sales and marketing and into industrial chemical and then back to the family farm. Now, all the while, I've kept a shared passion for my real desire to be in life to be an author, which I just recently achieved. It's a long one, but I, uh, after graduating from Bethel in 2010, I got a graduate assistant program, uh, assistantship at Defiance College where I worked in sports information for two years. Uh, then I got a one year paid internship at uh, the University of, or Penn State University, excuse me, um, for one year and I did uh, athletic communications. And then I did another one year internship at the University of Oklahoma for one year doing athletic communications. Uh, after that, I did a full-time one-year position as an assistant director of athletic communications at uh, Mercer University in Macon, Georgia, and now I am at uh, the University of Notre Dame doing athletic communications, um, same role. My career path, I'm uh, an engineer. I studied mechanical engineering at Purdue University, and it was kind of easy for me. It was in my DNA. My father was an electrical engineer for General Motors. So I was following in my father's footsteps. Um, I currently work uh, in the automotive electronics business, primarily automotive safety. So I have a lot of activities worldwide that uh, are really interesting and it's a very challenging environment. Uh, my career path uh, obviously has changed from travel and hospitality management and I went over into the EMS and fire career. I spent about eight years uh, molding myself as a volunteer, getting on a paid service and then just recently getting my um, 
full-time position at Columbia City Fire Department. I've wanted to be an architect since early on, since about sixth grade. I kind of knew I wanted to be an architect, and so I always followed that path. Um, joined an architectural firm early on, uh, joining college. Uh, so I followed that path all the way through. Well, I'm retired, and my career path uh, went all over the place. I started as a typing clerk for uh, Sprint Corporation's United Telephone Company. Uh, you either went in as a woman, uh, as a typist or an operator, and so I took that route. Uh, from there, I was executive secretary. They sent me then back to data processing, which was a bit of a surprise, but I learned so much there. From there, I trained um, the business office people out in the 32 business offices. And after that, uh, I thought, you know, I've trained them, I know all about it, but I've never done it. So I went out into the business office and ran one of the largest ones in the state. After which, the executives came and said, okay, you did that, so we'll come back in and consolidate all those little business offices into two big region centers. So we did that. That led to me becoming the first woman uh, director uh, at the Indiana Company, and that was in public relations. And we did care, uh, customer service, uh, we did public relations, we did advertising, uh, we did all that stuff. When the two companies uh, consolidated, uh, we were deregulating and consolidations were happening all around us, and I became um, a, a director in Ohio. Uh, for a two-state operation at that time and I was in carrier services which uh, deals with the long-distance companies. After that, after many years of that, it seemed like uh, I became Vice President of Carrier and Enhanced Services and we managed five states out of Mansfield, Ohio and it was a very rewarding experience. Well, when I was 16, I picked up uh, a regular digital camera for the very first time and just absolutely loved the pictures that uh, came out of it. Well, mostly just where I fell into place, where life took me. I've always had a passion for sports. Ever since I was a little kid, I knew I wanted to work in sports. And um, so, yeah, I just had to follow my passion and uh, that's what I really wanted to do. Um, my specific career, I even go back to when I was younger, growing up on the farm. Um, growing up as a farm boy, you had to come up with a lot of solutions for a lot of problems, and that was almost uh, an automatic transition into engineering. I knew from a very young age I wanted to help people, to be around and um, assist people. I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to do it though, so we started out with the travel and hospitality industry, and then it morphed and grew into service in public service sector as uh, fire and EMS. When I was at Mentone Elementary School, I had an art teacher that took us outside uh, in sixth grade on the sidewalk and showed us the house across the street. She was teaching us how to draw perspective drawings. And so she handed out drawing pads, uh, gave us rulers and pencils, and was showing us how you do the uh, uh, curved lines uh, down to the perspectives. And I thought that was the coolest thing, how that would just pop out at you and just come alive. So from that point on, I was drawing houses and buildings and just loving the art side of that. So that really drew me towards architecture. I don't think I did. I think it chose me. Um, I went to work to uh, help pay for my home. <laughs> Steve and I had built a new home and as I worked and I watched mostly guys uh, coming in as management trainees and I thought, you know, here I am sitting here training these guys to be management managers. Why can't I do that? And so when I had the opportunity, I tried to take advantage of every opportunity I could get and work my way up. Um, although it is very flexible, um, I still have a lot of editing time and that still does take away from some of my family time. The most challenging aspect of my career is finding time for the passionate part of my career, which is writing. Uh, the, the amount of time that it takes to, uh, for work, I mean, we work long hours, a lot of nights, a lot of weekends, a lot of travel, so uh, that can be one of the fun things, but that's also definitely uh, probably the biggest challenge. Currently, the most challenging aspect of my career is the speed is, of what technology is moving. Um, it's great, I work in a very high-tech industry, but quite honestly, sometimes I have to get the younger guys to help me reset my cell phone if I need something not taken care of. Uh, there's a lot of challenges. Uh, the biggest one for me has always been the time away from home. 
Currently now I work every third day, so I spend literally a third of my life away from home. I would say probably just the time aspect because architecture is a project-based um, service uh, business and so we have a lot of deadlines. Uh, we'll end up working a lot of hours to get things done. I really enjoy what we do as, as architects and so I'll spend a lot of time doing it just because of the enjoyment, but just balancing that out with family and uh, God and church and just spending a lot of time with the family. Oh, well, there were many, being the only woman uh, and a, a whole bunch of men. Uh, so there were a lot of challenges there, but if I'm honest with you, uh, the biggest challenge came after I retired when I, uh, I was on the board of the Beeman Home, which is the shelter for abused in uh, Fulton and Kosciuszko and uh, Marshall counties, and we needed to build a new shelter. And we tried to get someone to come forward and lead that charge. No one did, so uh, I stepped up and uh, spent four years of my life raising $2 million uh, over uh, a phased-in approach. We did finally do it, and we're up and operating. My husband and I definitely share a love for dirt bikes. So whenever we have time, um, we do that together. Um, even as a family, we, we do have a small dirt bike and a small four-wheeler that our kids love. Um, we are very much a sports-centered family. We love softball. My husband and I both play on a team currently. Um, and then my daughter plays throughout the summer. And football, our six-year-old son is now in football. So we love going out and just whatever ball we have, we just love going out and throwing it around. So. I'm a traveler and a thrill seeker. I like to get out, see things, do things, get things moving. I go scuba diving, uh, we go climbing in the mountains, we travel over. In fact, we're just now planning a trip to Ireland. I have a lot of friends in the area since I now live uh, where I graduated from college, so I just really like to, you know, be with friends, be around family. Um, I now have a niece, uh, getting to see her every once in a while is great. Um, but yeah, just being around family and friends and going out to eat and just uh, having a good time socially with, uh, with all of them. I love anything outdoors. I'm blessed. I travel a lot. I spend a lot of time in the summertime golfing. I love to ski in the wintertime. Um, I do boating, uh, scuba diving. So anything that has me outdoors, I'm quite happy with that. Um, getting away from electronics is a big thing for me. I uh, enjoy going outdoors, camping, um, bushcrafting, anything that gets me out into nature and away from um, lots of people. I uh, really like spending a lot of time with the family. Uh, I've got a son who is uh, really into science, so you'll find us out in the garage doing a lot of science experiments, um, mixing things together that we probably shouldn't be mixing together. Uh, I've got a daughter who's into uh, competing on horses, so uh, she and I take a lot of trips down to Lexington. And then my wife and I uh, really enjoy the beach, so most of our vacations are centered around trying to find a beach somewhere. I love to travel, uh, and I think that goes back to my teacher in high school. She kept talking about Italy, and I thought, ah, that sounds good. But uh, I like to travel. I like to take photographs when I travel, and then I scrapbook. And we have seven uh, grandchildren, so as they were growing up, I took a lot of pictures of them. And as they graduate from high school, I present each of them with a scrapbook uh, of their memories with my husband and I uh, in their growing up years, and um, it seems to be a big hit with all of them. Um, well, I think what kickstarted that was my husband and I, we volunteered at our church with uh, preschool, Sunday school. Um, we did that for two years, and then our little guy was born, so we kind of took a little bit of a break. And I currently help with Kids Church once a month. Um, I also help with our women's ministry. Um, my husband and I have been to Guatemala twice, which has definitely been the most significant life-changing thing. Um, with our children, we have been involved in seed packing events for Africa, uh, just local, locally. And then the most recent, uh, I took all three of my children to a local church where we gathered donated clothing and brand new backpacks and school supplies. And um, we got to hand them out to local needy families to get them ready um, for the upcoming school, school year. So. 
Giving back is a personal passion. I love to give. And throughout the years, I've done many things. One of my biggest passions is counsel of burn victims, where I was a top solicitor for many years. But I throw my time in anywhere I can, uh, recently up to Vincent Village in Fort Wayne, uh, animal shelters, anything I can to help back and give back. Well, over the years, I've had the privilege of uh, uh, working at a couple of different places. We've done a couple of uh, Habitat for Humanity builds. Um, another one was we got to volunteer at a regional uh, food pantry. And then uh, w the, one of the cool ones was when I was in Norman, Oklahoma, we did a, a, um, a playground rebuild for a local elementary school in one day, which was really cool to see. Um, from a volunteer aspect, the thing I'm most proud of is for 10 years, I was a volunteer track coach for Western High School. At Western, I focused on pole vault because that's what I did here at Tippy Valley. And in that 10 years, I uh, had 16 athletes go on to college, which included currently four collegiate college record holders, a Big Ten championship, a uh, Big Ten champion, and two All-Americans. I'm currently a cadet coordinator for our uh, high school students at Columbia City High School, where I bring them into our fire station and we teach them how in Columbia City we fight fire and how we just uh, have a structure. Uh, it's every department's a little different, so we bring them in and kind of teach them the ropes. Um, I'm on the sur supervisory board of Midwest uh, Federal Credit Union, and I'm also on the board of Heartland Sings. But the thing that's more dear to my heart is a group that's called Celebrate Recovery which is a biblically based recovery program to help people that are struggling with just about anything from whether it's drugs, alcohol, um, pride, um, relationships, things like that. So I've really been involved with that group for about five years. And the thing I like about that the most is just you know, getting involved with that and helping people and giving back. Oh goodness, another big list. Uh, I've served on a lot of the boards uh, in Kosciuszko County, uh, so many of them, it's hard to name them all, but I will say right now, I'm involved still with the Beeman Home. Um, uh, the Altrisa Club that I'm a member of uh, founded the Beeman Home in 1985, and we still support it. And right now I'm chairing Bingo for Beeman Home, which started out nine years ago, and we just kind of wanted to, to present them with some money that we didn't have to raise, that we could raise and it would be theirs to begin with. And uh, we raised $1,500, and oh, we were so excited. Well, last year, we raised 15,000 in bingo for Beeman Home. So it's a, it's a big part of my life and Altrus is a part of that. Definitely my kids. Um, the Bible says if you train your child up the way he should go, he won't depart from it. And my husband and I are definitely seeing that now and we, we have the hope for the future to see that as well. What gives me my biggest sense of pride is helping. I want to help people. You know what, you can accomplish anything in life, but that's just going to give you money. It's not going to give you satisfaction. If you want satisfaction, you help someone. Uh, just all the relationships I've gotten to build all over the country over the last couple of years. I've met a lot of really neat people, a lot of really neat coaches, student athletes, and um, yeah, just being connected with, um, as I said, a lot of really impressive people all over uh, the country and building friendships. If I go back to my professional career, as far as accomplishments, uh, I mentioned uh, automotive safety technologies. When I see products that I've worked on that to get into the production environments and I see a commercial on TV, and not only realizing it's something I participated on, but to actually maybe changing or saving people's lives because of the technology. The biggest sense of pride is um, the recognition I get for my work. Um, it, it's a lot of times when you're doing the job itself, you don't get a lot of the recognition, but then when you go around and you see how well people um, respect the position, it makes you feel good that this is something that you can do and you can actually benefit and people come back to you years later and you've changed their life or you've made something better and that just makes you feel really good. Um, I think probably just what I've been doing with my family. You know, the career's been very important. I've really pursued that a lot, but just uh, putting a lot of energy into my family, just seeing the difference that has made uh, as a husband, as a father, to see the differences that, that's made in that. I loved it when I became a vice president. I had to chuckle to myself a few times when that happened, but um, if I'm honest, uh, my biggest accomplishment was graduating from college. I was the first one in my class, or my, my family, to do that. My brother went to college, but left when he found out he was going to be drafted to join the Air Force. 
And so I was the first one to actually graduate from college and very rewarding. That even though you have obstacles, they are not, they, they don't define you. Um, they don't have to be, they don't have to derail your life. And with the proper help, you can get through absolutely anything. High school gave me a lot of things. It gave me good social skills. It gave me the opportunity to learn in a positive environment. And it gave me confidence. Confidence is what we all need to build a better future. I think it's just, um, you know, how to manage your time with uh, being in sports, being in different clubs, um, just really learning how to balance your life is in what your social life, uh, you know, your academic career um, and your work life balance. I would say that's it. The biggest thing I learned when I got to Tippecanoe Valley is all of a sudden we were a group and we functioned as a group and we succeeded as a group. And that became a very important in my life going forward. Um, to the decisions that you make in your life, uh, you are solely responsible for those decisions and that all those decisions and responsibilities rest all on your shoulders and that you can benefit or failure from just those items. Um, I would say just a lot of things that I've learned from a lot of the teachers that I had uh, in the classes I really enjoyed. I had one teacher that just uh, explained uh, to some students earlier that uh, he treated us like a colleague, like we're in the workplace, just showing us things and just that respect, and I think that really translates into just dealing with relationships with other people and at work. I was involved in a lot of things in high school, and I found that I could lead, and uh, I liked doing that, and uh, I think I got better at it as I got older, and uh, uh, probably in high school wasn't the best, but as I grew up, I, I got better. Definitely, the <laughs> don't try to ever convince anybody um, that you're a good person. Show them that you're a good person by the way you speak, the way you treat people, um, and the works that you do, definitely. Positive, be positive. Life is full of many things, but the most important is to be positive and achieve your dreams by believing in yourself. Find your passion, whatever that is, just pursue it with all you've got. Um, don't settle, find something that you really like to do in life and uh, go for it. As I spoke with students today, the one thing that I really thought about was education is a foundation, but it's a foundation you got to build on. To be successful in life, it's about relationships. Relationships at home with your family, your friends, and even professional relationships. If you establish good relationships going forward, you're really going to succeed in life. Uh, be honest with yourself about who you are, who you want to be, who, where you want to go. Uh, and as long as you're honest with yourself and you're willing to put the forward motion in and you're willing to go through the struggles that it would take to be the person you want, you'll always reach that goal. This morning I was kind of showing a bunch of words of, you know, how would you describe yourself in one word? And the one word that I chose was perseverance because kind of a non-traditional way that I approached architecture with the degree, the education, the credentials and just found that through uh, a lot of years of just persevering and chipping away at those things that uh, you can accomplish the things that you'd like to do. Well, I told everybody when I talked to them today, all the students, I said, expect the unexpected. Because um, I did not, I was gonna be a wife and mother of 10 boys and we had two girls. And so that didn't work exactly like we thought it was going to. So, uh, you know, I had to change my plan. We, I went to work to pay for our home and Every step along the way that I took in that journey to become a vice president uh, was, a, was a challenge and it was just something that um, I had to work through and I appreciated all that effort.